Welcome back, everybody. We are here at the Kespa Cup 2018 Finals. And if you're just tuning in now, you know, maybe you thought it started a little bit later. It's already 2-0, to zero, Griffin. Game one felt close. Game two did not feel close. Griffin beginning to run away with this one, Papa. And that's the very conservative way of putting what game number two was. It was a very good performance from Griffin. And it wasn't necessarily just one team just running over the other one. It was over. It was just how deadly it is, how decisive a team can be. They find their moment. They take something from it. The moment Aurelia had two kills, the game kind of went into a lull. And I'm not making a emote here. I'm talking about how... Mid lane was kind of vacant, no longer could Lissandra pressure that lane, and they used that to make a smart play, and from there just kill the game. Like it just ended, right? Because yeah. the game can end very fast now. Baron buff is still strong, the minions are stronger without Baron buff. All the pressure ramps up, and when you have an Aurelia who could just ignore turrets super early into the game, you leverage it the right way and you win, and that's just the reality. I think a lot of people look at the draft and say, how could they get those champions? Because Cassiopeia and Aurelia are both on the same yeah. team, right? But it wasn't so much as we saw it, we said, this is the sort of game where with the draft that Genji has, maybe tier list wise, they're lower, but we actually really like the chance for Gen.G to yeah. assert their will in the early game and then just carry it through because it felt like Akali especially could outmatch in both lanes yeah. if it was Akali would say a thousand goldly. But the ifs, the what's, the what ifs, they never happen. And then you come away looking at the scoreboard and say, well, they won because of the better champions. That's not about it. It's the decisive play. It's how yeah. clean Griffin were able to be. It definitely looked like a seasoned team versus a team coming together which is so surreal, right? Because yes, they're seasoned in one way, and yes, the enemy yeah. team is lacking synergy in another, but you really have to check your terms, right? You know, you really have to think about how you approach a lot of these things, because all these players have such a minimal amount of experience. The only player on the Rift among two teams who has won the LCK is Peanut, right? Yeah. No one else has done that, and that's that's why we talk about the next generation. And Gen.G have a lot of growing to do. And if they lose 3-0, that doesn't take away from the fact that their roster has come together much better yeah, than I think a lot of people sure. would have predicted. They still are. One of those expected top five for the LCK next year. But uh, I think Griffin, if they win 3-0 and 8-0 over the tournament, deserve to come in top one when it comes to predictions because they didn't change anything. We know they were oh so close last time. And suddenly, when they're in these matchups, it's not looking close. Yeah, I mean, nothing to, I don't want to take anything away from Griffin, but they're the only team here in the Kespa Cup that we're sticking together as a whole. And I think it's showing, especially with all the new rosters. This was the big first fight as Tovi, he just goes man mode. He knows the ability to get into the back line as Aurelia. And as I mentioned before, he gets out alive after all of that, which is just insane. Big credit to Lahens, our game one MVP, for flashing in for the headbutt to disengage any further damage. There was a chance a couple of Mystic shots later. The Aurelia went down, wasn't as flashy this time on the outside, but didn't need to be. Aurelia was the kind of site that we were focused on in all these fights. How big would she pop off was the question. We saw the Sejuani again, it was great. It wasn't really again about the junglers, it's just the projected advantages for Gen G more often than not have been dulled. R Ruler has been farming, he hasn't been at fault of anything, but he hasn't been able to seize the game. And the expected advantages for Griffin may not all be firing at once, but someone is always making the big play. When there's a one percenter, which is what we call when it's like this Baron Steel scenario, Rift Herald is stolen away. And that's really consequential for how this game plays out. Everything is just slightly better where it needs to be, or in some cases too much better for the side of Griffin. And that's why we find ourselves three match points already. Yeah, so Gen G, I mean, any team that goes down 0-2, I think they always go into the back room and they say, we have to change something up. The first couple of games did not work. Two games of Ezreal doesn't work. We get the Akali, still doesn't work out. So Gen G, what should they do to change this up and actually change the momentum in the series? Well, there won't be any roster changes. We'll get to that just as we go over the Baron fight here to close the game where Toby presses buttons and... He's five <laughs> levels above that he person, plays Aurelia. he's three levels above that person, level lead there, four levels over that person. You know, at this point we don't need to go into the intricacies here, even his auto attacks are deleting people. I think just a fundamental change is encouraged, but I can't like drip you something and say this is the strategy they yeah. showed before that's going to win, because there was an undefeated Akali, and then the Akali was the most defensive build against the Akali. I really like what Sora did, not even upgrading his Hex Core until 17 minutes because he was too, build too busy building Mercs and an Abyssal Mask and they still win from there. 
Look at the damage numbers here. Again, they don't really tell too much of a story overall. It's yeah. the timer. It's how clean it was. Two Drake, two turrets, two kills, nothing else for the side of Genji. I think the gold towards the end before that Baron came in was really interesting because actually we're talking about the top lane and Akali trying to carry up there, but the victor went really defensive in item build, but still was able to pick up Klepto and survive and not go down. So Victor was actually ahead in gold over the Akali. Obviously, we know about Irelia kind of turned into that solo queue-esque Irelia that go gets a million kills and just owns the game, which was definitely one of the bigger reasons why they did win. But as you mentioned, it just felt like Griffin were able to identify every strength of the Gen Z lineup and say no. <laughs> Basically, like, no, that's not going to happen and we're going to win. And that's really scary for any team going up against Griffin. They just seem to have this deeper level of understanding of the game right now. And our learning moment is that if you play Victor, because his base skills, even without the Hexcore upgrades, give him kind of shielding and wave clear and poke. He's got a ranged auto attack. And like you mentioned, the Klepto and a melee matchup. You can't be bullied. Other champions, think of Lissandra, right? She's also a kind of break-even champion in the mid lane. She goes after yeah. Shock. She tries to break even. I think Victor did it better than we might have expected. Akali as a melee champion can't really chip the turret too much. The turret health was quite high. But it shows us that there is kind of that outlast potential. Now, if you go that defensive build and bot lane feeds or a mid lane turret goes down, then you rock up into a team fight with no damage and you're useless, right? Yeah. But this was a build designed, tailored for an extended laning phase. And they got the extended laning phase. Top lane was isolated and good things elsewhere happened for Griffin. That should be your takeaway. It's not the new hotness build that you should go and just solo queue in, like, say, for example, Protobel Galio is, yeah. but it was very effective for the task that was assigned to Sword. Well, they did all their assignments, Griffin, and they only have one more to add to one of the most impressive performances at Casper Cup. It would be one more win to achieve that 8-0 undefeated streak here at the Kespa Cup in games. They're one game away from doing it. And we'll see how they do. Say 100 points in my heart is Griffin. I feel like a lot of fans are beginning to feel that way about Griffin. And I'm sure they'll have even more fans jumping into LCK 2019. Win something in Korea, whether it's LCK, Kespa Cup, whatever damn tournament. The fans will come. They come front row to see them here. We would have had a new domestic champion for the first time in four years. Would it be Genji or would it be Griffin? Looks very heavily likely that Griffin will find something in 2018 to go with the empty trophy case. I think it's time to start getting the dust out of there. Might be some more trophies in the future to fill up the trophy case. A 3-0 prediction. Looks pretty confident. You know, it's hard to argue against it, especially with the first two games going the way they did. And I just want to get into Pick Bad and find out what Gen G have. I mean, Gen G definitely looking like the best team outside of Griffin, based on what we have seen in the Casper Cup here in December. And I think they might be able to pull a win out of their back pocket here. I just want to see how they change it up. Maybe, you know, go into a different side selection or something like that. We'll have to wait and see. I want to see a special pick from Fly. We saw his Zoe, we saw his Lissandra. I'm not talking about the Urgot. I'm talking about the Poppy mid. I'm talking about the off-meta thing that forces Griffin to react to something they're not ready for. So far, Griffin have looked eminently ready for everything that Gen G have thrown against them. Here's to something new in game number three. We're all calling for it. All the Gen G fans out there want to see it, but Griffin definitely looking good to take the 3-0. Let's jump into pick and ban for game number three. And this time, finally, Griffin on the blue side. That will be Griffin's selection. They had side selection in game one, We're on to game number three, and they choose blue after being put onto red side by Gen G in our second game. What are they reaching for, Valdez? Because the duo of picks got them so much power on red side. Very interesting to see how Griffin will mix things up and why that CV Max has chosen blue side Galio, Aatrox, Rakan have all been unable to be picked so far in the Kespa Cup. They are the permaban list. Cassiopeia, will it be three games in a row for Griffin? Maybe Tenji could let them have it again and then come strong with two picks here. No, they're just going to ban it away. That leaves Scion available Aurelia. for Jovi, Aurelia as well. 
Definitely a couple of nice picks still left on the stage here for both of these teams. There's a trade of 80 carries available, so you don't expect a bot lane first pick, but maybe Griffin just won a power draft and you consider something like Illusion. So let's see how Griffin approached the first pick. The Urgot also has made it through, and that was, of course, very close to being a game one through how strong Cuvee was on the Urgot in game number one. Traditionally, Jovi has been the Urgot play, remember back to LCK Summer if you joined us for that one. How good he looked on the mid lane Urgot then. Sword can definitely play it as well. He's played it already uh, in the LCK. Gen G would be quite bold to first round Kaisa, but it is a favorite of Vipers. So maybe they just feel like they need a change in the AD carry role. They'll hover the Kaisa, stick with the Ezreal. They're sticking with Ezreal Tom Kench three games in a row. Yes, if they can find a turret lead into opening up the map, this can be so, so powerful. But it doesn't, the first two times, we haven't seen it be King Zone S, because this was a duo they used to run, where in spring season especially, this blew up the game through mid lane after taking a turret. We'll see if there's a turret dive comp coming through from Genji on the red side. to get that start going as Jace is just going to be first rounded by Griffin. It's blind pick Jace into the top side, you'd have to imagine. Of course, it could be flexed. I mean, we've even seen jungle Jace at times, yep. but it's it's just such an interesting early pick that puts so much thought into the side of Gen G. You know, how are we going to deal with this going into the next side? Looks like they're thinking about picking up Zoe first and then dealing it with it perhaps in the banning phase, but that Zoe for fly. Looked good in game number one. Wasn't able to get them the win, but perhaps Gen G feeling like game one was a bit of a fluke. You know, a couple mistakes made there. Perhaps if they can recreate some of game one's potential, they can come back here in game three. And I think to come back to your question of how did Gen G change things up, how about a fifth pick QV champion? How about he brings out one of his bag of tricks that so often he refuses to put out there onto the competitive scene because they need to find a way to redefine the draft, and they don't know right now the lane assignment, Urgot and Jace are flexible, and yes, they might be flexible to the end, but you have a more informed decision when you can see all five champions together. Griffin will know this, and they will also play around with expectations. Our expectation is that Viper is going to take a couple of hits to his champion pool from Gen G's bands. Poor Peanut as well, just getting a lot of his go-tos banned away. Of course, he did have Lee Sin in game number two, but wasn't able to make that a carry champion as the mid lane was just too strong on the side of Griffin. But wouldn't be surprised to see Zach Nocturne get taken away. We see Talia once again. They're just not going to let Tarzan play that Talia. So a single game of it blind picked from Tarzan, and it was kind of a win in spite of rather than necessarily a hard carry yeah. performance. So Genji knows something we don't. They're showing extreme respect to a pick that is kind of on the periphery of even solo queue on patch 824B after the single target damage to camps was ramped down so hard. You can team fight a little bit more reliably, but your jungle clear is a lot more conditional than it was before. The victor ban comes through from Griffin. Genji, we're looking for top lane and jungle. I know I'm excited about a last pick top laner, but they already see ostensibly the two lanes from Griffin. Viper's played a bit of J spot lane and solo queue, but we're not really indexing too heavily on bot yeah. lane or jungle Jace. And we will see that fifth pick for Cuve. If that's the lock-in, it oh. could also be a flex jungler here. I'm probably thinking it will be the top lane into Jace if that's the matchup. But Pina could also play jungle Poppy as well. It saw some attention at Worlds. That it did, Gen T. Definitely raising a couple of eyebrows on the side of Griffin. And all of us, essentially, with the Poppy, we haven't seen all too much. And that Aurelia is still available. We talked about flexing stuff. How about the Irelia into the mid lane and Jace going jungle? I can't wait to see what Griffin have up their sleeve. We need to know this last pick to see it. Jace jungle is around Korean solo queue, a Malrong favorite. He played it in the LCK before, but there is okay. a jungler. It's going to be Jace bot lane, most yeah. likely coming in for Viper. It could also be Irelia, but he's played it before in competitive play. So this is the one where Genji thinks they've next leveled, and now someone's next leveling themselves. At this point, speaking of next levels, a jungle Gragas. It seems to be what they're hovering, but Gragas has laned into Jace in competitive play before, and now I've successfully confused myself. <laughs> That's uh, it's a good a good thing to happen, Papa Smithy. It has to happen eventually. And Han played the top lane Jace, you remember. Sorry, top lane Gragas against Jace and got solo kills, I believe, on Soan for yeah. 
in the King's well, Zone versus Jin Air series, and yes, yeah. you could say something about So One here. But you just go Icebound Gauntlet and then pop him in. The jungle's there and he dies. That's how it goes. So Poppy in general against physical damage deals has always been seen as something that can get through hard lanes. That's why I thought maybe into the Jace, but Jace bot lane with Braum does seem to be the decision. The trigger is pulled, and we're going Deft style on this one. He was a bit daft on that day. We remember his team fight teleport that didn't look too good for EDG. He's not going to take teleport, perhaps. We won't know till the game starts, but uh, the lure is real for these bot laners, and seems like Viper, he's had enough fun with these 80 carries back to being an awesome dude. I mean, think about the potential for that Braum concussive blow to come in with Jace attacking a million times a second and getting on top of life who, with that burst damage, he can have the cleanse, but he still might be going down. So a very aggressive, what could be an aggressive bot lane in the side of Griffin once again, pulling out a new card of their bag of tricks. But there has to be a but. Wave clear is minimal on the side of Griffin. This is another draft where if they can finally get all their dots in a row for the early game, there's a potential to really punish the lack of wave clear on Griffin. We'll have to wait and see if Genji can come back in this one or if Griffin will get the 3-0 victory. Let's jump into game three and find out. Here we go, once again, game number three. Ruler, uh, buddy, that's really scary. That's so much damage and he has to take his E first to just get out alive. Better than using your flash, I suppose. Amusingly, he got an auto off mid jump over the wall and got a klepto gold sack out of it. <laughs> that is so unlikely. But amusingly, it takes a happen, and he gets two extra potions from it. Yeah. That's, that's nice. He doesn't have to flash. Skilling E level one sucks because you can't impact the minion wave. Auto Q actually makes Ezreal surprisingly strong at level one when it comes to pushing to proc the passive. But he does get the cold sack, and you know what? He'll probably need those health potions even with the Doran shield start as Easy Hoon. Now a coach on Sooning Gaming is in, and next to him is Maple right in the corner of your screen. So that is the new look Sooning Gaming are in attendance here at said John University. Fun to have all the esports personalities coming down for the big Korean finals once again here. And well I just wanna I wanna set our sights down in the bottom side once again, ruler on that E, but of course a bit of a team game here. I wanna see as well can Tovi pop off again on the Irelia might be a little bit harder this time, but Looks good in game number two. We'll see if he can pull it off again. There is a very clean lane assignment. It's so hard to solo kill a Poppy as Aurelia. It just takes so long and she builds full armor stacking. So at least the side lane, there's one flexible matchup that bodes pretty well for Genji. You're not going to be doing too much positive, but you're not going to be losing your life. And you can probably wave clear under turret. It is a very different game here. The side of Griffin is the ultra flex on the Jace, no doubt, is changing things up this particular game. We already spoke about it a bit as we rolled in. Big wave clear problems. EQ doesn't do too much from the Jace, and that's really all they have in terms of the minion wave. Urgot yeah. and Irelia can over time in melee range or close to make things happen. But let's talk about the other side, Valdez. Isn't this a matchup we've seen so many Irelia solo kills in? Because the moment you hit level six, you run at the enemy Zoe, and she ain't got too much going in the 1v1. It's about the reason why Fly picks up that Lens, you know, just wants to be safe just in case he does get stunned up. So he can do a couple of funny things if you play defensively. You can use your portal jump to get away from a stun and stuff like that. But as you mentioned, you got to be so careful in that lane. And we'll see if Toby can take advantage of that. And this one looked good even up against an, uh, a Lissandra in game number two. So I feel like that ceiling just, you know, pushed a little bit even higher for Tovi on the Aurelia. Really weird back timing from Peanut. He's already shot once. He had to start uh, alone on the red, uh, on the Raptors on the red side. 
He didn't actually get boots on his first back. He's doubling down on a clear. Usually the famous thing with the Gragas is he has a predictable back timing as he wants to buy boots and his second jungle item. If we see a Gragas fall behind, they usually just buy boots and try to pull off a Predator gank. Instead, it's Aftershock coming through from Peanuts, so it's not actually related to that. It's the sort of thing you just gloss over, right? It's the sort of thing you don't look at. But it's Aftershock Gragas that does open up flexible pathing options, but does mean you have to really be ahead of the game or use your Flash to pull off a game. Speaking of which, Peanut is heading towards the mid lane here for Tovi, but of course still Cleanse and Flash available, just showing his face, putting down a ward, making sure that Fly is safe before those Raptors do respawn. Sword did not have his jungle at top side, so that's why he's giving up minion waves here. He's probably gonna be about two or three CS behind if he can pick up all the minions on the turret. Speaking of under turret, it is Jace who has the access to so many abilities in the laning phase that things like this will never be happened. Also using the charges there pretty flexibly is mid lane. Tovi could be in a little trouble, but Tarzan is here. Looking to turn that one around is Tovi. Looking to even bait them into that one, but Peanut and Fly say, no, no reason to go into that one. Bit of fighting down on the bottom side and the top side is Kuve. Able to pick up a stun into the wall, but no kills just yet. Wall slam is well used. Notice there is no charges of the corrupted budget for either side. Cuvee he now sees Tarzan trying to disengage here. Hard person to lock down. Trying not to use that flash, and Cuvee able to get the stun into the wall, so doesn't have to use flash. Very nice play there as he gets the one up on Tarzan. But remember that the goal of the gank was not let's kill Poppy. That's obviously the gold standard. The goal was Swords under a lot of pressure with low mana, low health, and wants to push out the wave on his terms. That's still able to happen, so it's still a successful visit from Tarzan. The hands being a bit of an annoyance here, gonna stop life from backing. Wants to hold the wave as much as possible for the Jace. Sorry to Dirk, first purchase. Always the chance that there'll be a tier in the Jace build, but are we going to be manaless build here coming through from the Jace? Less about the sustained poking, because honestly, that's what Gen G is all about with their Zoe and Ezreal duo. So, just wants to show up with a serrated Dirk and maybe even force Ruler to be super late with his tier. Do notice Sheen for some lane trades, but no tier yet coming through. Inferno Jake first tier in game number three. We'll see which team wants to make a play towards that, but already some really nice deep vision in the red side jungle by Gen G on the side of Griffin there. So they spot the Sejuani coming on in, and they would know if any plays like that were gonna happen with a early Infernal Drake take. It doesn't look like anything's gonna happen. I love whenever Jace has played, how the Korean audience always does the wah. Whenever a uh, Shock Blast that is accelerated yeah. does hit, it's a big one. It's pretty hype when someone loses more than 300 health at once, right? In an instant, that's what happens with Jace from range. Seeing a lot of people coalesce topside, they don't have any vision of that brush. They would love to see it. But no real reason to walk up. It is Ezreal Tom Ken. So hard to see this leading to a kill for the side of Griffin. A bit of a low chance there. Just seeing what they can see, maybe Ruler. Loses it and goes too deep, but and that's the thing, right? not gonna happen. For them to face check there, the replay is me saying, why did they need to know about that? Yeah. Why did they need to go in? A Schrodinger's brush situation, now a turret dive. That'd be something different, but we need a couple more rounds of damage on Ruler to make that work. Fly picks up his exhaust, but they're still gonna go in on this one. Cleanse coming in, exhaust on a Tarzan. As I suppose now, at least, Fly doesn't have his exhaust. Uh -oh. And now he's going to get ulted. Has to flash away from that one. So they get both summoners in the trade. Turns out to be pretty good for Griffin. And that's what it's about, right? It doesn't have to be the kill or more. The first gank got a good recall timing. The second one might get them an Infernal Drake. Peanuts tankier than you might think. He's gone Ruby Crystal. This is going to be a Cinder Hulk Gragas and just be a true frontliner. The Drake has started. Lehens is here. Is there going to be any response from Gen G? They'd love to stop this Inferno. Viper zoned out just a bit. This is a huge one. Can he get the smite on it? No, it goes over to Tarzan, but the flash body slam comes in. But it's not enough damage. They have to devour and disengage. Here's Jace in the backside, but Viper maybe going a little bit too far on that oh. one. It's going to go for the uh, hit back and flash at the same time. Makes it out with his life. So Infernal goes the way of Griffin. It's going to turn here. 
Lance, he's in a bit of trouble, but Tarzan oh. is there. As you can see, Griffin stays together as a team after picking up that drink. One becomes five is their tagline, and you see in moments like that they do have each other's backs, but Peanut's still here, doesn't have his cask, used it earlier. They're trying to stop the backs here, but this will get some turret checkpoints, you imagine. There's going to be even a dive attempt. Yes, yeah, chilling spike. Can they get on the hands who does not have any summoners left over? It doesn't look like it's enough. Oh, Viper blocks the Q. And that's going to be a big one, even threatening the kill onto Ruler. But this ends up being net positive for Gen G because they can back away to the buffered uh, charges of the demolish there and get at least some turret plating. Will they get two? Watching for that, they're not going to greed for it. Roller Rios can't stay, and Tarzan, he's almost got his ult left up on Sejuani. Well, whatever the outcome of this series, you can always say that a Griffin Gen G Finals, or just any kind of best of five, is going to produce some fun. And already at the Infernal Drake on the new patch, which I certainly do love for all the action it brings. We already have a really interesting fight that does go the way of Griffin just in terms of the Infernal Drake, but gold lead now for Griffin after the push, in, or, or rather Gen G after the push in the bottom side. And to your point of live finals, no one wants to come to a big stadium and have a 3-0, but the nice thing about this one compared to say, uh, if I think back to some of the old ones, like we had CJ Entis play in a final, I believe against ESC Ever, the first one where it was very heavily one-sided, but CJ, the lineup was breaking up, so you know, at the end of the day, it would be nice to win and get the prize money and get that extra title to your name, but they looked pretty out of it, if you go back and watch that series. Both these teams staying together for the next round. Both of them are playing high-quality League of Legends, it's just that Griffin is better. It's not like Gen G are falling apart left, right, and center like Dumb One Gaming evolved to uh, a couple of days ago. It's just Griffin are the better team, which again, doesn't come as a surprise to many of the analysts. And Gen G, they seem a step behind the play, mostly because Griffin is at least a half step ahead of the play, sometimes even more. They have that feeling, you know, that feeling of the game. And now Tarzan gonna make his way up to the top side before Peanut spots him in here. Two beefy boys, both of them Cinder Hulk junglers, remember? Yeah, Aurelia on the first roam from the mid lane too, as Fly with no summoners. Having a little bit of trouble keeping up, but no dive is going to come in. Again, it's hard against Poppy, especially because Peanut is there. They decide to back away. Tarzan and pinged out the route of Peanut even without seeing him because consider the situation. QV was under turret with 400 health and so it has Ignite. So you know the enemy jungler is coming to help. He has to. It's bot side. This is what I was talking about. Does it matter that he has the cleanse? The stun comes in. Is the damage enough? Yes, it is. First blood goes to Viper. Doesn't matter if he has stopwatch, if he has cleanse, he is still going to die to that Jace Braum combo. And it's in the 2v2 that they find an advantage. Life jumping on the Tom Kench for a third time this series. Life has had some great laning moments here, remember, as Alistair was out of this world earlier in the tournament. Now on Ezio Tom Kench, Ruler and Life, this new duo. I found one. Let's watch the replay. Life just gets, takes too much damage early. And at this scenario, he's just so far up the lane, you can't afford to make those mistakes in Viper. Nice finesse on the Jace. I love the way he played it too, just out of. Oh, he actually got a kill onto the Zoe. Zovi gets the solo before the Zoe's flash is available. Don't worry, guys, we're going to get a look at that replay. Another big kill in a solo kill in the lane. And we stopped screaming about Irelia solo kills on Zoe early in the year because it happens so damn often. But to do it in a final, that's another thing. Look at the lane situation. He flies not even far up, but one stun hit. Cleanse is up. Cleanse. cleanse does no value at all. Fly has to come back in. That's the dramatic nature of the portal jump. And goodbye, Fly. Things start to stack up for Griffin. Once again, in a best of five, it feels like game three is slowly turning into the most one-sided game that we do have in the series. We'll see what Gen Z can do to fight back. They do have the Tom Kent and the Abyssal Void trying to get the steal, but it does go the way of Tarzan, it looks like. Now Kive trying to come into the backside, denies that dash, and he's gonna get in there. Tovi, also super low, at least picks up the Rift Herald. Can he get away? He's trying. Is the question. He dodges a lot, gets oh. the stun. He the heal. And a heal from Viper. He might just get out alive. He's so fast too. Flashes up on Peanut. Heal onto Peanut too. They don't want to use too much, but Tovi finally goes for the early is blast there. Escape? It is. There it is. The sun goes in, but does the Viper go down? It looks like he will, and Tovi oh. is going to go down too. 
Griffin, maybe this time, taking a little bit too far, and Gen Z, credit to them, finally finds the kills. That was the great escape movie that you had to stay till after the credits to see the extra scene. Sadly, he does go down at the end. Griffin back away, they've given over multiple kills here. This goes a very long extended contest around here. You could have guessed oh. that it was in fact the old, but it was the chilling smite that takes it down. Remember that Chovy on the back end picks up the Rift Herald that they were in no position to pick up. The merry-go-round here was amazing to watch as he lives all the way till dying to an Iceborne Gauntlet proc, and I would assume a single auto from the Krux right at the end of this play. You just watch till the end and Finally, he decides to flash away I know, from that's it. That's the thing. Why does he still have flash at yeah. that point? Amazing how that happens. Let's see if it was the auto or the Icebone Gauntlet. It was the auto. Krugs yeah. did the work. And Ruler flashed for that, too. They wanted that kill big time. Wasn't Speaking even... of wanting things, okay. Ult's almost up. Nice, nice. stopwatch. Tuve, Tuve rather, is going to be in a little bit of trouble still. And it looks like he will go down as stopwatch doesn't stop Zord, who picks up another solo kill on the top side. You can be a good player, but can you be on Griffin's level is what this series was all about. And unfortunately, in a couple of different ways, macro and micro, things like this are happening. Meanwhile, Chovy picked up that Rift Herald earlier. He puts it down, and how oh, about no. a solo kill? Spy, at least he does have his flash this time around, but they get it again out of that Zoe. And another charge comes in with the pressure in the mid lane. And the Aurelia was on the board, the Zoe is opted into because it is that comfort pick from Fly, but the matchup is happening. The Aurelia is doing her thing. CS leads in two lanes and bot lane pretty even, all things considered. Ruler continues to just kind of be a full-on figure on the sidelines. This is the guy who was their win condition <laughs> so often in this tournament and, of course, over the course of 2018. We hold him in such high esteem. But I feel like they've had this super sharp dagger in the bot lane, but they just haven't been able to navigate him to a scenario where they find value out of the Ezreal. They're going to have to survive for quite a long time here. At least the gold lead isn't insanely in favor of Griffin. Only about 400 gold to their side, but they do have that Infernal and the Ocean Drake. Well, we'll see what Ruler couldn't do this time around. 1-0-1, one, one. definitely a different look compared to some of the other games he's played Ezreal in in the series. Can he do it, especially up against a team that doesn't have that traditional AD carry? This is kind of Ruler's comfortable spot, I'd say. A lot of his timing's going to be a few minutes behind. He couldn't get the tier very early. Ice Bomb Gauntlet rather than a man immune as the first purchase. This top lane is uh, going better than expected for Sword. Oh, he hits it again, and you've got to imagine he's going in. This time, no stopwatch. Oh. Dodge is the ultimate, but does he have enough follow-up damage? Looks like it will. But Cube, can he escape from this one? Yes, he can. It times out, and Sword is not going to get the kill. Taking a lot of minion damage, actually, there. A couple more rounds. Who knows what might happen? Well played that time from Cube. Remember Cube is a tank and also the Gragas is a tank, so they need Fly and Roller to be popping off. And you can see that Fly is super afraid for his life. They don't have vision of where Tarzan is and he's playing so unbelievably carefully. But at least Peanut's here, but is it gonna matter as Fly is just gonna pop like a balloon and now Toby going deeper for Peanut. They have the ultimate, there's the double oh. kill into Stopwatch. There's the fade away from the side of Griffin. the ult from Ezreal as well. Unbelievable, these guys are putting on a freak show right now. Griffin, unbelievable plays. How do you sidestep the Ezreal ultimate after <laughs> all of that? It's supposed to go down, you're supposed to be bad and down, but no, he stays alive. Chovy continues in the mid lane. Oh boy. He's found a Tom Ketch. And nothing that life can do to get away. Not even sure why he's there. It's beginning to feel like Dom one scheme number three now as somehow Gen G find a way to run it down as well. Your heart goes out to Gen G. How can Griffin make these plays work? We start this, remember, Peanut is lurking in the backside, but he doesn't do a lot of damage. He's Cinder Hulk on the Gragas, so yes. Milena goes down, Chovy has to reset aggro, but Tarzan comes in, stasis at the perfect time. This is not even the best part. Flashes the E, and watch this. <laughs> he sidesteps the damn Ezreal ultimate. How? How does he do it? How do you know to poke the wrong way towards the turret? <laughs> He's one of the best in the world now, not just for his jungling, but just for his mechanics and the way he plays the game. And we watched on Valdez, you and I, and we tried between whatever duo it was, 
when Griffin was stacking up the wins. Remember the schedule they had? They started off with the weaker teams, and you know you didn't want to give them the title or any sort of big proclamation because it's so unheralded to come into the LCK with rookies everywhere, coaching staff rookies, and find much success. And they took down the first four, and we were still pretty grand. We're like, this team's way better than we could have thought. But we weren't saying anything more. And then they beat Kingzone, you know, the reigning champions of spring. And we're like, all right, these guys have arrived. We couldn't have known they'd go 8-1 and one in the first round, Robin. But they were always better than they should have been. But now they've had a season where they almost won, and they stayed together. Somehow, even in that scenario, they're better than they should be and they should be really good. So suddenly, they're looking like world beaters at this point. It's outrageous the things they can do, and the fact that their mistakes are always poultry. It's less than a handful of series, it feels like. They push out here, it's a three and a half thousand gold lead. Everyone is at their mercy, and Genji, because they went two threats, only Ezreal and Fly on the Zoe as damage dealers, they need to get a lot of things right just to get a single kill onto Griffin. This feels like whatever strategy you bring to Griffin, whether it's, you know, Galio Camille, you want to go for dive against them, whether you want to against poke against them, they'll do it better, but they're, they'll also counter you in whatever composition you have with just better play, better picks, it feels like. These guys are just winning the hearts of everybody. And Tarzan's beginning to make it up there as one of the best in the world, but Outside of that, I love that it's also a team effort. We had some questions about Sword and Lahans, especially early on, but now they're carrying their weight. Sword is is solo killing Cuvee. And, uh, you know, Lahans showing up big even once again here, yeah, especially in game number one. These guys are just the best team, even if they don't have, you know, number one player in every single role. And, you know, you come back to their interviews, and they were always very brash. In the promotion tournament for LCK Summer, before they had qualified, Griffin talked about scrimming for worlds. That was the meme around the Korean community. When the coaches comments on matches against MVP and teams like that, the coach said, we're going to win. Just like one liner. And when you, they talk to the interviews, they interview the players, they're always like, I think I'm better than him. I think we're going to win cleanly. And you think that's trash talk. And you think that's, you know, bringing up some confidence for some young players. But more often than not, it starts to echo some of Faker's famous interviews years ago of just being facts, just being glib, just getting to the point. There's no need to trim the fat if you're Griffin. Moments like this can just beg a belief. Lahen's gonna turn here onto Peanut. Doesn't really have too much help though, as Lahen's just gonna have to flash and dash away from that one. Kind of a funny engage. He returned to the top side, this time the bot side, as Sword continues his domination. Can Chovy be collapsed upon here? It's one on four. Gets the ice <laughs> or gauntlet, but gets the stun onto life, and he will make it away alive. Every time I see Chovy in a scenario like that on the Aurelia, I, I cock my neck about 30 degrees and wonder how many people he can take down in a unnumbered position. You're not supposed to think that way yeah. when four people are there. and. You never know with Griffin. They walk <laughs> up here, fly, you know, uh, he's in a lot of trouble. Peanut's not been spotted. They have no idea about him. Maybe they can take down Chovy, but here's the backup. Okay, the teleport comes in, and you might have your question answered, Papa Smithy. Trying to turn onto Peanut here, but the stopwatch is there. Stun onto Ruler, but he gets devoured as they want to turn onto the backside. Big shock blast by the Jason's Viper. Nearly takes out Peanut. A flash away from the stun by Peanut. Now flying, gets too close to the sun, and he's going to get ignited down by Lahans. At least Ruler is able to trade back one. It looks like he wants a little bit more. Still on the chase here. Can he find the snipe? Ooh. It's not enough damage here. So important they got the answering code. They're still on the rift. Here's Akin Shift. Flash forward. Could Ruler this begin to turn this one? He gets one another more. one. This is that one, but Viper in a lot of trouble. Picks up the double kill, has the devour, and Ruler finally is beginning to show what he can do on the rift. Finally, get that, they get that dagger onto the map, and it's a dagger in the heart of the Griffin fans. Really nice moment, finally punishing one of Griffin's moves. If you're wondering about the teleport, was canceled by the Urgot on the bottom side there. No teleport completed for QV. So we back away here. Griffin still in the driver's seat, still have some tools that are going to be so hard for Genji to answer, but Peanut's extended camp and the early teleport is important. In the mini-map, we can see the actual ability to juggle them over and interrupt the teleport was important. As the fight goes on, they pick up the first kill as the Jace comes to join, but Chovy's health bar is already super, super low, and because there's no threat onto Ruler, he free hits, he keeps his passive at almost full stacks for the majority of this fight. 
And Ruler is experienced enough as the MVP of their 2017 Worlds win to know there's always a time to keep going. That time was now. From so far down the lane, this is what you can do as the Ezreal even has to blow it's his flash like for it. But, I mean, he, he just knows, as you said, he knows that he can find that damage, has Tom Kench to back him up. No doubt he's telling life, follow me, follow me, follow me. Gets in there, and uh, Peanut is going to face check here. Looked a little bit weird, but there it is. Peanut all alone. Not the first time this is going to happen this series, as this time on red side will face check and gets taken out. Of course, we missed the table setting. I would assume that there was a vision issue there, and there was no blue trinket available. Otherwise, that was uh, a little bit unforgivable. They're looking for a collapse on the sword, though. Sword, awkward spot here. Gets stunned up, but they turn it around. They're going to delay everybody. Jason to the back line once again. But the Baron will be stopped because of that awkward engage. And now, that's pretty nice for Genji. Very good contest. It's impossible for Irelia to dive into that team fight because the steadfast presence from Poppy actually occupies the entire uh, choke in that area. So you're actually going on a one-way suicide mission. So smart of Chobi, even with ultimate up, to just stay back, to not go too far. There was no objective to take there. You're only diving for kills. They don't need that. They're already ahead. So smart to back away and ended up being a smart contest from Gen G as well. Nicely done, kind of stopping Peanut from taking all the blame on that one, even though he had to face check. It, uh, it felt pretty good that they were able to stop the Baron in that situation. And good news, one of our favorite mini games of the Casper Cup is back, Gragas Bowling is what Peanut will be playing this game. If you didn't join us for previous Gragas Bowling, 24 behind is a Gragas and your job is to sit behind the Baron on red side and throw down your Q and your only job is to put down wards. And honestly, if you're going a tank build, it's a bit more forgivable because you won't be losing out on AP stacking. So yeah. Peanut is probably going to just have to contend with just playing top red side jungle, maybe getting half the Raptors and stopping Griffin from getting the Baron vision that will force a face check like we saw earlier. Mountain Drake coming up here for Griffin. That ult was way too early as they have zero vision of it. You might as well just go for it. But Baron, or rather the uh, Mountain Drake makes their relatively weak Baron take a lot faster on the side of Griffin. And the problem for Genji is all they can do is contest vision around Baron or all in on an enemy Drake. And they can't afford to give up the Baron. So their win when a Drake goes the way of Griffin is, we got a couple of wards in the river. We, we got the Ward in the middle of the mid lane, but there's really nothing else they can claim. They can spit farm on other members, and Jace late game is not going to be Ezreal. We said that the previous game, it's still true here. Irelia late game, pretty good at killing Zoe and, and Ezreal, though, and if she alone can contest those two, you'd imagine Cuvee and Peanut will be trying to peel for those two. You just see free damage coming from the other members of Griffin. That's kind of the tragedy of Gen G, who just need the Baron, honestly. They desperately need the Baron to fully force Griffin on their terms and once again take advantage of some mediocre at best wave clear on the side of the blue team in Griffin. Got to admire Genji's tenacity after life kind of, uh, you know, ran down oh. mid and died to Jovi. And I was already kind of feeling like it was over, even calling it, but at least they're able to come back in this one and say, hey, we're not going to go down. And now they're in a comfortable spot. They have Ezreal, Tom Kent, their favorite team composition. They have the Zoe 2 for Fly, one of his favorites in the mid lane. And they have a couple of beefy boys too. So this game isn't over, even though Gen.G is behind. They've been in worse situations like this, and the passive Gen.G comp has been able to come back before. But our observer highlights Irelia, and that's the problem where you put all those things together, and I agree, there's some things you can navigate around that in other games would be a death knell, but Aurelia has a 700 bounty, and it feels like Chovy might become Mr. 1000 as his nickname on the Aurelia, given that he's once again knocking on the doors of a big bounty. That's the one where, because it impacts side lanes, it's much more important than, say, the ruler outclassing uh, Jace in the late game scenario on the side of Gen G. They have to find a way to narrow up Chovy or hope for Chovy to dash in and be screwed over by the steadfast presence or a stun coming through from the poppy. That's what you're indexing on because that's the one thing that Gen G don't have an answer to. We're going to have to wait for the next bit of action to show itself here, but Ruler and them will be happy to just sit back as 4 and 0 and wait for it. Peanut continuing the bowling, and well, he gets stunned up here. Visual lag. Okay, he's able to actually use his body slam, importantly, 
to make it over. He still has his flash to contest a Baron. And let's talk about something we very rarely talk about. Exhausting a team of vision. Walking up like that, they get a control ward. There was only three in the infantry and the two of them were on Zoe. She's shopping again. They're out of control wards around the red buff. That means that right now is the perfect time to start Baron because there's no information and you know Genji has to face check this predictable. Lahens blocks it here. They only now get vision at 7,000. Yeah. Peanut's walking up. Okay, Peanut trying to get in there. They get the stun down, down into another one, and there will be the smite from the side of Tarzan. Perfectly lined up there from Tarzan and Lahens to secure the Baron. And what a fortuitous time to be talking about vision exhaustion. That's what the two invaded. They didn't try and throw an ult over the wall on the Gragas. They got the control ward. They did what I did is look on the right side that there's actually no control wards left on the members whose job was to contest vision. Like you said, Gragas bowling was avoided that. I guess he threw the Wiimote too far and the Wii bowling unfortunately couldn't happen. And that meant they had no face check. They stopped the Baron. The interrupt is beautiful. Of course it is. They're so square around their set plays around the Baron. And that's how you get a Baron in Bloodless fashion, even though the Gragas is on the same screen. I think you, you think about a perfect scenario for Peanut and how he would be able to get on in there. Uh, perhaps could have flashed that if he had superhuman-like reaction timings, but as you mentioned, it really goes over to the side of Griffin for shutting him down. Speaking of shutdowns, uh-oh factor to the now uh, uh, Guardian Angel on the Aurelia. Zoe says, nope, not for me. Let's 5v4 somewhere else, please. She's not going to be happy up against that Aurelia. Now 800 on the bounty. 5v4 is probably the best chance they're going to get. Tarzan here is beginning to get really beefy as well. So he do, he just shrugs it off. He doesn't care. And I think Sword is going to be in a similar situation. Can just flash away from just, this one. Exactly. All the turrets are going down now on the top side. Meanwhile, at Aurelia is once again a jump scare for Gen G fans. They Take the time to push up the minimap here would be so fun. If you're just watching this game on the minimap and seeing them dart forward and back, you'll see things that lead to free inhibitors going the way of Griffin. So I'm pushing up on the right side. This is the full court press in its full glory. Game number three of the Kespa Cup final. Knocking on the door of closing this series, our Griffin. Still have a minute 30 on the Baron too. And it's so many lanes that can't deal with their opposing partners. Poppy can do nothing down two levels up against the Urgot in the bottom side. Zoe runs away from Aurelia in the top side. And that poke does nothing to the Braum now. There's so many tanky members on the side of Griffin as they're so far ahead. What is really Ezreal and the Zoe gonna do here? He's gonna get a little uh, poke onto Tarzan, but he just laughs it off, still has his flash. Tarzan. Are some more minions in the mid lane? It's Viper taking a lot of damage, so kill him. Go wide. Aurelia is forced to Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> he died mid-air to Roller the Roller coaster. <laughs> Roller coaster play there from Sword as they take out the Poppy. And it doesn't look like Genji is very long for this world as Griffin putting on another astounding performance in a finals now. In another best of five. Can they stop Griffin? They're down 10,000, but Griffin's sticking around. They know they have the 5v4 here. Aurelia coming from uh -oh. behind, just waiting uh -oh. for that. Flash. He catches everybody in the ultimate. That's going to do it. Everybody melts in the backside. Fly will survive, but it does not matter. And it looks like Griffin are going to take the victory here, guys. 3-0 once again, undefeated in the Caspa Cup. They win the finals 3-0 over Gen G. Congratulations to Griffin. They get their moment in 2018. Not the moment they looked for, but the moment they will accept. They are the best team on the 31st of December. Does that mean they will be the best team in two and a half weeks when the LSK starts? They should certainly be right up there in terms of the betting markets. They look like the best team in Korea. We were lucky to get the two best performers in the Casper Cup against each other. And no one is in any doubt that the speedrun kings of Griffin, who only get through in eight games out of eight, the minimum requirement being seeded into the second round, but they look so good doing it. They don't need any roster changes. They don't need any fake hype. They are, in fact, the new team on the block, and these new kids are pretty damn good. They look untouchable. You throw so many different strategies at them. You get comps that are comfortable for your team. It just doesn't matter. Griffin always seemed to win out in pick and ban. 
And we see that they always seem to work it out in the game. It doesn't matter what the game state is, from impossible moments to very far ahead, they always feel like they're in control. And that is a scary thing to think about when you think about Griffin for next year. As you mentioned, you know, a lot of different rosters still trying to come together for the Casper Cup. They'll have their moment, at least, Griffin. Can they push it into next year after all the different rosters get together, get that teamwork together? I can't wait to find out because right now they look like the scariest team on the Rift in Korea. They throw on their champion's hats, well earned for Griffin. They will lift the 2018 Casper Cup. They follow in the footsteps of ESC Ever in 2015. In 2016, it was the tearful goodbye to the Rocks Tigers. Last year, the KG Rolster Super Team did win a title right at the end of the year, but this year feels different. It's a new dawn with new rosters and also our new gods of Korea. They will have plenty of people vying for that title. The Dream Team is only getting stronger from SKT. Genji have been able to work out a lot of issues that look better than their previous roster that did not do well during the course of Worlds, but Griffin is the new Leave kids that everyone's talking about. Caster Park gonna come on top. We'll get us some words from our winning team. It'll be interesting to hear what they have to say after their undefeated streak here in the Kespa Cup, making it all the way through the strongest teams. And we are gonna begin this interview in just a moment, guys. It's Griffin, of course, the champions. Let's hear what they have to say. And today, the champions of the stage, we are going to have an interview with them. Hello, Viper. Two times Casio, one time Jace. Yes, Tamalis, your opponents. Where did all your strength come from? Well, our core strength is our head coach and always giving us positive energy and always leading us in the right way. There's a lot of things we can still learn from him. I think we can become the champions because of our head coach. Oh. Sword is always showing very safe play. But do you think that's all because of the head coach? <laughs> well, it's not all because of the head coach, but... <laughs> definitely the head coach, CV Max, here, uh, is a big part of the team. And of course, now we have to talk with the head coach, CV Max, see what he has to say. After all these Last time we were defeated by Genji in the World Championship Qualifier. Today, you got your revenge. You destroyed every game. Now you are the champions. And Viper said that's all because of you. You played a gigantic part. Well, all the shot callings and all the things I tell the players, it's just ideal, it's not really realistic, but when it comes into the game, they somehow seem to pull it off, and they strive to reach that ideal, and our team strives in that environment to focus as much on the game and become the best. And he says he's a lucky guy because his wow. birthday is related to the number seven. Lucky guys, and, you know, seven lucky number. Say you're a lucky guy, but your players are following your orders to the T. But what do you think about the core strengths of your team outside of that? All the members of the team have gigantic potential to be the best in the world. 
핵심 규칙은 지켜가면서. 그래서 선수들이 so, 지금 엄청나게 had some limitations to boost star teamwork, but this year 기세대로라면 앞으로 열릴 is going to be the moment where they can shine through past those limitations as they've had a year to come together as a team 마지막에 연말에 롤드컵까지 build their teamwork together. 가기만 했었으면 그리핀이 뭔가를 보여줬을 거네요. Always asking about the World Championship. Says he would have had a fantastic opportunity to show off on the global stage. But you might be able to have that opportunity in the future. Do you want to say anything about that? We always are ready to show a better performance than the last time. We're always yeah. working as hard as we possible, possibly can to become the best. So thank you, as always, for your support, and please keep supporting Toby. us. Hey, Tovi. Irelliaro. Choshupo. With the Irelia. Kim Dongjun is being created. He just showed off some super plays. Maximaki cha 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 cha. Two games. He made all the fans go crazy. On that pick. So many people watching in awe of your play tonight. So now you've become a champion. How does that feel? I'm pretty happy with my performance today. I couldn't think about specific words to describe how that feels. I just feel great. You know, you deserve it. He does. He had to make the best mid laner out of any mid laner in the world. Who, well, who participated in the Kespa Cup? Who would it be? He says, I, I wanted to prove that I was the best mid laner, and I was happy that I was able to prove that tonight. So, in front of all of their fans, show your determination for the future. Come on, young 17-year-old Chovy, give us some badass words. He says in the future, I'm always trying to keep up my current form and do my best. It would be, it would be really grateful if everybody continues to support him in the future. Good old Chovy, we'll see how this guy who's only 17 can continue to make his mark. So if you hit your opponents, you drag them in, you always seem to destroy them. This is of course Lahens, the MVP from game number one. You guys proved tonight that you're the best bottom duo. Even over Ruler Life, who had so much hype behind them. How do you feel about that after winning the championship? I'm happy that we didn't lose even one single map. That's obviously very satisfying. I talk a lot with Viper, and we work really hard together, and I'm happy the result came out as expected. And I want to thank our coaching staff in particular as well. So right now you must feel very sure that you're the best bottom duo in Korea. How strong do you think Griffin's bottom duo is exactly? Throughout the Kespa Cup, I've been thinking about how well I've been playing as a bottom laner. And now I'm very satisfied with our uh, results so far, but I don't want this to stop here. I want to continue pushing to become even better in the future. And now, we see the king of the jungle is Tarzan. We're going to be talking with him here. The big champions that no other jungler plays. And a lot of people evaluate you as the strongest jungler in Korea. So, what do you feel about that title? He said today, I kind of hopped on the bus. I wasn't the bus driver today. And I honestly think that all the other team members were playing so fantastically today that today I was just a bus rider rather than the bus driver. So, how about any specific plays or players that you want to point out? He said, well, everybody played great. 
Everybody was on the same page here. 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 If I seriously answer you, we still have a bit of time to practice before the LCK. So a lot of the other teams will practice and try to get up to our level. So he says it's, it's pretty early to determine whether or not we can pick up the championship. But we're just going to practice our hardest to be the best for Spring. Very honest guy. So sword in the top 했거든요. side. 힘들었을 텐데 그래도 여기까지 잘 왔습니다. 이 자리 빌어서 우승 So you've been always thirsty for the championship and you've done it here. 아직 <웃음> 든든하게 버텨주고 싶은 탑솔러가 되고 싶었어요. 근데 감독님은 he says I still want to be very safe and 진짜 날카로워지고 더 된다라는. For the top laner side of things, but the top laner actually says it's not enough. You need to, you know, open your champion pool up, I suppose, and have a keen sense for the game in multiple different roles. Be able to push advantages, not just be that tank supporter. Yeah. And it still feels like we're improving. Scary thought. Some specific skills that we still need to work on individually and as a team, so still a lot of stuff to work on. So, second coach here up on the stage. They put a ton of effort to be up on the stage here, so I'm really happy that they finally got the victory. What is your determination for the future? If they work as hard as they do now, I think they can make some really great results for the future as well. So the last player here. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have a chance to participate in the games, but as a sub player, you're still supporting your team a lot. You must feel a little bit disappointed not to have been able to play, but what do you think? He says, I'm still happy even if I didn't play. <laughs> My idol support, support. Idol, yeah. yeah. Lehens, I learned so much from him. And I want to become a player. Remember, you can be a champion in the future. And remember, Kavi only actually became eligible to play in December, mid-December. So he's fresh, he got to be front row, and uh, it's just a time to appreciate all the great things around him. So that's it for the interviews. Some really honest stuff and very humble, I'd say, even after taking out Gen G and even Tarzan mentioning, you know, these teams have a lot of time to build up their new rosters and get to a, a very high level. So we don't want to call any championships right net, right just net, uh, just yet. But uh, we are going to go into the award ceremony here, guys, in just a moment for Griffin, who picked up the win here, three to zero, undefeated overall in the Casper Cup. And I think that pretty much does it for us, but it sounds like we're gonna have a special interview here on the front here. This is the Africa TV CEO. Great Africa TV, of course, bringing you this tournament, Kevin. It's, so it's great to hear from you. League of Legends, Casper Cup. Introducing the runner-up team here. It was Gen G Esports. Always difficult to come up with a runners up trophy, but remember for Gen G, this is a team that had never made a domestic final. They've changed their roster. For them to be second best team at Kessler Cup, which I think you and I are willing to award to them, that is still a good sign that they're rebuilding is going in the right direction. Can't wait for LCK and wait for these rosters to fully flesh themselves out in terms of practice and also matchups such as the Telecom Wars and Gen G versus SKT and Dom One up against the other side too. 
It's going to be a lot of fun stuff at the LCK. First, we'll be bringing you that uh, stuff starting in about two and a half weeks, as Papa did mention. 16th of January, first day of the LCK. No schedule release just yet. We don't have the spoilers, guys. We actually don't know, but I bet there's going to be some big games to inaugurate the first LCK matches played in LOL. Should be unbelievable stuff starting next year. We had so much fun in the Kespa Cup, and now it is time to, of course, introduce our finalist, our winner. And let's first show our awardee. It is the Kespa chairman, Alex Kim. So he wants to hear from the chairman here. 2018 Casma Cup. All the teams who participated in 2018 Casma Cup. And to all the fans who showed all the attention and expectations. Yeah. We're looking forward to the Kespa Cup. I want to show my gratitude to everybody who supported us. So we had Kespa Cup right at the end of 2018. So it was a great Kespa Cup, really fantastic stuff, and I will have even bigger expectations and for the next year's Kespa Cup as we will try to do even better for the coming years. Thank you to the Korean Esports Association, Kaspa, putting this on. Love the timings, love the changes, but I think it's time to hand over those winners' trophies and winners' awards. The Invincible Team, Griffin, coming on over from the left, the champion of the Kaspa Cup will pick up 40,000 Big ones here, 40 million won, so just yeah. under 40,000 US dollars for a nice little tro trophy prize. But I'm sure the stage experience actually lifting a trophy and lifting their spirits for 2019 is the big win here for Griffin. That it is. These guys deserve it so much. They stick together as a lineup and they show that they are huge titans coming into next year's LCK. A mouth-watering one cannot wait to see if Griffin can hold it together. Perhaps make another final in the future here. It's a really fun Kespa Cup. New rosters, new patch, great preview. In the past, when you looked at the teams that won the Kespa Cup, it wasn't on that new patch, it wasn't on the new rosters, but we got the preview of that. That's the thing, is that, yes, Griffin are the overall winners, but every team got stage experience for challenges and LCK 2019, and that should mean that once we get there, the rustiness might be a little bit less rusty in the first few, week, few weeks of January. That it will. This guy is up here. Very well done. And it looks like Caster Park is going to close it out. MVP Guys, it is the last day of 2018. But we are one more piece of business about this. We're still going to announce one more thing. It is going to be the MVP of the Caster Cup here. We're waiting for it. The result is MVP. ready. The MVP of the Caspa Cup. Chopi! He's gonna go to Chopi. Okay, yeah, picks it up. Again. And honestly, for that performance, the bus driver here twice MVP. on Aurelia in the finals. You cannot argue with the MVP in the Kespa Cup Finals going to Chovi. And that's the result that I think to them is even more significant than winning. Their mid lane prodigy could perform on aggressive, it could be aggressive and not be awed by a situation of being in front of thousands of fans both here and globally. So Chovi being willing to show that killer instinct, not on a tank, but on a carry, is another great reason why Griffin looked even stronger than earlier this year. It's a huge confidence builder for a young player that's looking to rival big mid laner names in the LCK. Of course, Faker, guys like Showmaker, etc. So many big mid laners there, and I cannot wait to see what he can do for that. But we're here, guys. We are. It was a fantastic Casper Cup. So much fun. So many fun games. And, uh, Man, I just loved every moment. We're here at the end of 2018, and it was the perfect way to finish it off. Thank you guys for joining us for a very rapid 
Kesper Cup. We went through a lot of games, ended up with 43 games, 11 match days in two weeks, the trophies, everything's going on behind us. What an awesome tournament. Well, it was so much fun, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way up to the end. We'll see you next time here in Korea for more League of Legends. Yes, uh, in 2018, LCK 드디어 우승을 해서 정말 기쁜 한 해였는데 2019년도에는 꼭 롤드컵 우승을 해보고 싶습니다. 제가 2018년도에는 좀 어, 병원 갈 일도 좀 많았었는데 건강하지 못한 모습을 좀 보여드린 것 같아서 제가 사실 이번에 뭐건게 있어요. 한달 동안 운동 계속 하시면은 팀크랩 사드리겠다고. 저는 종빈 형을 만난 성덕이기 때문에 꼭. 꼭 우승했으면 좋겠고 꼭 가져다 드리고 싶어요. 다음 시즌에는 LCK로 승격해서 팀 배틀 코믹스와 어, 경기를 다시 치러보고 싶고 이제 LCK 승강을 위해 열심히 노력하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 2018년 어, 어, CJ 때부터 활동했어서 이제 팬분들이 응원을 열심히 해주셨는데 많이 못 보여드려서 2019년에는 아깝게 놓쳤던 기회들을 이제 잡을 수 있는 한 해가 됐으면 좋겠습니다. 어, 저희 아무래도 LCK 뛰니까 저희가 철코에 있을 때보다 더 강한 상대들을 만나니까 재밌고 더 잘할 거니까 기대 그런 부분이 좀 기대되는 것 같아요. 저희가 아직 신입생이고 많이 부족하지만 목표가 있다면 플레이오프인 것 같아요. 5등. 5등 정도는 꼭 하고 싶어요. 네, 안녕하세요. 이번에 진에어 걸링스로 새로 원거리 딜러로 합류하게 된 스티치 이승주라고 합니다. 진에어가 다들 어린 친구들도 많고 신의 친구들도 많은데 포텐도 다들 있는 선수들이니까 꾸준, 꾸준히 변화 없는 응원 많이 보내주셨으면 좋겠습니다. 네, 안녕하세요. 그 아로라라는 닉네임을 쓰고 있는 미드라이너 김민우입니다. 네, 여러분 2019년에 솔로랭크에서 저 만나면 반갑게 맞이해주세요. 감사합니다. 네 안녕하세요. 저는 미스피치에서 네, 서포터를 맡고 있는 고릴라 강범현이라고 합니다. 2019년도에는 이제 LCK에서 볼수 없지만 저 LEC에서 열심히 어, 준비하고 열심히 노력해서 좋은 모습 꼭 보여드리고 세계 무대에서 다시 볼수 있도록 노력할 테니까 많은 응원 부탁드리겠습니다. 감사합니다. 2018년에는 어, LCK를 무조건 가고 싶었는데 그런 기회가 많이 있었는데 그때 못 잡은 것 같아서 엄청 아쉬웠던 것 같아요. 이번에 2018년에 실력이 많이 들어서 다음번에 들어오게 되는데 앞으로 꾸준히 열심히 해서 2019년에 좋은 성적 내도록 하겠습니다. 이제 좀 있으면 스프링 하니까 스프링에 적어도 플레이오프권 안에는 들고 싶고 롤드컵에 진출을 제일 하고 싶습니다. 2019년이요? 올해보단 훨씬 더 <웃음> 낫지 않을까요? 이번에 공식전 0승이라 1승만 하면 <웃음> 일단 더잘 되는 거라 좋게 더 탄탄하게 뭉쳤으면 좋겠어 힘내자 APK 네, 안녕하세요 SK텔레콤 T1에 이제 새로 입단하게 된 탑라이너 칸 김동아라고 합니다 2019년 이제 새롭게 리빌딩된 SKT 기대 많이 해주시고 응원 부탁드리겠습니다 감사합니다 그 챌린저스에서 승강하고 이제 썸머에 SK 들어가서 잘 하는 게 지금 당장의 목표인 것 같아요 지금 하던 대로 계속 이제 열심히 노력하면서 갖춰가면 될것 같아요 그러면. 2018년 한 해에는 이제 
제가 형들을 따라갔던 그런 해였다고 하면 이번에는 좀 동생들이 많이 생긴 것 같아서 이제 좀 중심을 그렇게 잡아갈 수 있게 열심히 해야 될것 같아요. 아, 네. 또 이게 여, 연말에, 그리고 연말 그것도 새해 바뀌기 하루 전이거든요. 이번 2018년도 별, 별일 없이 무사히 마무리 했다고 다들 믿고요. LCK에서의 모습이 저도 참 많이 기대가 된다고 생각해요. 어, 어, 팬 여러분도 정말 새해 복 많이 받으십시오. 네. 2019년도에는 꼭 롤드컵을 일단 가고 싶네요. 일단. 새해 복 많이 받으세요. <웃음> 저희 팀 응원해주셨으면 감사하겠습니다. 네, 감사합니다.